What's up everyone? This is Isaiah from Player Development. Recently I decided to try out for an ABA team here in town and the results that I got from that were a little mixed so far. We had a camp last week and at the end of camp coach told me some feedback that he saw about my game that just didn't really match with how I envisioned my own game. So obviously the way I wanted to play basketball wasn't showing through during the tryout process. So I decided to ask a coaching friend of mine, Isaac Spiker, who's a coach out in Kentucky, and just call him up, get his feedback and what he thought on what he looks for when he sees players try out. Hey, what's up, Isaac? Thanks so much for taking my call. Just wanted to ask you a couple of questions, but for the people at home who aren't familiar with you and your work, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, well, hey, I appreciate it, man. It's always good to good to talk to a fellow uh, Covenant College Scott. We come yeah. from the mountain and all that stuff, man. So it's cool to see a relationship uh, over ten years now. So um, mm -hmm. congratulations on everything you're doing, man. Yeah, anybody who hasn't met me, my name is Isaac Spiker. Uh, I'm a high school head coach uh, of a decent sized public school in Northern Kentucky, just outside of Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, I've been able to be fortunate enough to have a, a fairly long coaching uh, life based on uh, you know, how, how, how old I am. I got to graduate in uh, 2010 from Covenant College where I met Isaiah. Um, had the privilege of being a, an assistant coach at Covenant College after graduation for four years. Got to be kind of that 22, 23-year-old uh, grunt man who would travel around the Southeast and just uh, be on the road four days a week, five days a week, just uh, living in basketball gyms and uh, eating ramen noodles when I came home for a couple of years and stuff like that. But uh, it was a it was a great foundation, a great great way to get into coaching and, and uh, be exposed to a lot of different environments and a lot of different thought processes. Um, kind of decided that you know college basketball coaching wasn't my mo, wasn't something I wanted to do forever. Been able to have a now coming on nine seasons as a high school basketball coach, um, some as a head coach, some as a uh, some as an assistant coach. Most recently, I'm the head coach of the varsity program at Beachwood High School. Uh, we're we're a top three academic school in the entire state of Kentucky right now. And uh, the athletic program is growing every day and we're really, really excited about it. But um, yeah, the cool thing about it all, along my journey is I've been able to see a lot of different uh, layers to the game. Um, started out again, coaching college men. And uh, most recently I've been in you know high school girls. So it's a, a very, very different style of uh, communication of motivation and uh, believe it or not, you can't talk to uh, to a 14 year old girl the same way you can talk to a 22 year old man. Believe <laughs> it or not, but uh, yeah, I've gotten I've gotten the privilege to uh, to to be a part of a lot of club basketball teams, uh, to be on the board of directors for the Kentucky Storm Elite here in Northern Kentucky, uh, one of the larger AAU programs in Kentucky, and uh, because of that, I've gotten to run a lot of tryouts. Uh, a lot of, run a lot of tryouts for my own teams, both in high school level, at the club level, uh, as well as several other coaches while they just kind of watch on the side here. So um, hopefully I wasn't too long winded there, but uh, but that's a little bit of a little bit of my background here in Northern Kentucky. Yeah, for sure, man. So a little background, like uh, like you alluded to, I'm going through a trial process right now for an ABA team here in Williamsburg, Virginia, and um, I'm just trying to make a good impression, man. So we've got. We had our initial tryout. We had one camp already. We have another camp coming up in July. So first impressions are probably already set for me, but I've got other chances to show out and show what I'm capable of. So generally and in your experience, what do you look for uh, besides the obvious stuff as a coach in the tryout process? So, I mean, the the, the level of play is really going to make a big difference in terms of what a coach is going to look for. I mean, what we look for, you know, when we were recruiting in college is very different from what I would look for uh, with my varsity high school basketball team, which is very different from running a sixth grade girls tryout, you know, very, very different mm -hmm. across the board there. A um, couple of uh, baseline obvious across the board things. Um, when you're looking at the, uh, I would say the high school and below level, mm -hmm. I, I've, 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 gone through tryout processes where I identified a kid who I did not feel was an extreme athlete or a physical contribution to the team. But I picked out over a handful of hours of tryouts or even a couple nights of tryouts uh, that they would bring something off the court that would be of great value to the team. Um, 
definitely taken several players on my teams over the years who I didn't think were going to be um, huge contributors on the court, but were huge contributors uh, in the huddle, in the locker room, in the practice mm. court. Um, that were gigantic, um, gigantic pieces to what we were trying to build at the time. Um, at the same time, you know, um, you got to have players who can play. I mean, at the end of the day, you can feel warm and fuzzy about having kids that you like, <coughs> excuse me, the kids that you like on the team and rooting for them and rooting for the underdog. But at the end of the day, you got to have, you got to have horses. I mean, you got to have people that can take you places. So, um, yeah, I mean, the, 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 the kind of, two sides of that is one, you know, we're, we're going to look for talent, you know, and more than likely, you know, if a kid's talented uh, and they're not an absolute train wreck, um, we're, we're probably going to take them even if we feel like they, they may or may not be uh, an issue in the locker room, because we're going to say as coaches, it's going to be on us to manage uh, any issues that could be off the court. Now at the college level where you've got a finite amount of, of spots or maybe a finite amount of college or uh, college scholarship opportunities that you've got, um, that changes when I, when I'd be on the road, um, like I said, in multiple gyms a week for several months at a time, if I felt like a kid had bad body language or spoke to his coach inappropriately or clearly had a weird relationship with his parents, he probably, his talent probably wasn't a big deal to me. Like I probably wouldn't even pay attention to his talent. Um, and, and a, and a big question mark, you know, for, for me and a lot of, you know, varsity high school basketball coaches is where that line actually becomes a reality you know i mean should, should it be lower than college you know should should you cut should you cut kids in high school who um you know sometimes have good body language sometimes don't really depends on the program sometimes um but you know as as you're seeing i i, I haven't seen any of your tryouts i imagine all the guys in that tryout can play i mean yeah everybody can play everybody brings something on the court that um that the coach is going to say okay i'm, I'm going to try to see what what bringing that ingredient to the meal is going to do to the mm. taste of the overall meal. Um, so from a, from a standpoint of what, what can you do to, to, to stand out? Um, something I in particular look for, I, I'm a big culture coach. I'm a big unity coach. If I find somebody who is picking others up, you know, other people are missing a handful of shots in a row and there's somebody else there who's picking them up and saying, Hey, get your chin up, shut up, move on, shoot the next shot. Um, that's going to matter a lot to me because that kid might not make a ton of shots, but if he can help that kid psychologically make a bunch of shots, mm -hmm. then he's an added ingredient to the whole product. Does that make sense? It does. I guess this whole set of offensive skills is what's going to stand out easiest when you're running through drills um, during a tryout process. What are some of the little details that you might notice if you're running scrimmages or other kinds of drills that you might look for. Yeah. Um, so to, to double down on what you just said, I mean, hardest thing to find is people that can put the ball in the basket. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I've always kind of said, you know, that offense is a lot of skill and defense is a lot of you know passion, intensity, and just making sure you're in the right position. But, um, I mean, putting the ball in the basket is an art. It, it really is a skill that not everybody was born with. And, um, and I've had kids who have been some of the hardest workers that I've ever, ever had who just don't have an inborn innate ability to be in a consistent scorer. Mm -hmm. You can be a scorer. You, you can find a spot on the team uh, anywhere. Um, as to what's, what's maybe some, a small detail that maybe jumps off the page that maybe people aren't paying attention to. I, I think everybody is paying attention to this. Maybe not. Maybe so. I, I think the, an obvious thing is, which kid picks and chooses which times to take off? Which kid is going to take this drill a little softer because he knows that he's going to turn around and he's going to jump on the, the scrimmage court and he's he can smoke everybody because he's overall better. You know, maybe he's going to jog through the, the layup lines or maybe he's going to, you know, go half hearted on the box outs or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but what player is going to is going to be playing every single possession? Um, and is not going to take a not going to take a down off. Um, I uh, I've gotten the opportunity to watch a lot of a lot of uh, AAU basketball this spring, and and like I said, the thing that jumps out to me most is not what player has the highest ceiling, but what player do I know I'm going to get everything they've got. That play, that play, that play, that play, that play, that play, that play. 
their ceiling might not be as high, but I'm going to know exactly what I'm going to get from them out of every possession. That's, and that's value.